happened in the last year from the point of view of your professional career? Where are you yes. now? Thank you very much. It's a bit, um, I'm getting a bit of echo with you, but uh, let me talk a little bit about me. So, uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name is James Clark. I'm a marketing director at Draper Esprit. Um, we're a pan-European, um, publicly listed venture capital fund. Um, and yeah, it, it's sort of, it's a new job for me. I started just over a month ago. Uh, in fact, a month ago yesterday. Um, and before that, I was at London Stock Exchange, where I was the head of tech and life sciences. So working with tech companies across Europe and across the world um, to encourage them to come and IPO in London uh, on the public markets there. And now I am marketing director for a venture capital fund, which is publicly listed in London. Um, I was actually the host of their, their ceremony when they, when they joined the market. So there's sort of a nice completeness about that. Um, yeah, so for the last, I guess the last 12 months, I, I sort of spent my time in the stock exchange and then um, sort of from the beginning of this year, I've been in transition between my role at the stock exchange and, and now my role at Draper Esprit. Um, joined the company about a month or so ago and yeah, sort of getting used to being part of a really interesting team. It's, it's, a, it's a venture company, a venture capital company that I've known for uh, many, many years. Um, the, the founders, Simon and Stuart, uh, friends of mine and I, I've known them since probably about 2012. Um, and yeah, look, it's, it's really exciting for me to have this opportunity to be part of uh, this team and to try and um, do things a little bit differently uh, for the European startup community. It's very good that you said that because uh, as I understood, I take a look on the Draper Esprit website. It is a venture capital that is targeting the entire European uh, startup ecosystem. Am I right? That's correct. So um, we are listed in London and in Dublin. The Dublin is a European listing. The main thing about that is obviously we make investments all the way across Europe um, and we have partnered with other venture capital funds across Europe as well. So um, so Draper Esprit has taken um, limited partner stakes in European funds like Seedcamp and Early Bird Ventures. Actually, through our, through our relationship with Early Bird Ventures, we have a part ownership in UiPath as well. So um, a sort of a strong Romanian connection there for us too. Okay, so also a fund of funds and uh, you invest in this uh, other fund. This is just uh, extraordinary. I'm really happy that now you can uh, have a direct involvement uh, also with Eastern Europe and with Romanian yeah. companies. We are looking forward. Uh, yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, it, it looks really amazing. I, I was looking uh, more about uh, on Draper Esprit. I have to mention, I told you also in the last, uh, in our last uh, email that uh, during the Startup Grind Global Conference in Silicon Valley, uh, we held some of our Startup Grind's uh, internal meetings in the Draper University in San Mateo. Uh, where they also have their pre-acceleration programs. Uh, it was really amazing, a very nice mood and uh, everything. Uh, yep. Tell me a little bit more. I've seen that they are doing uh, venture capital in another way, some, somehow different, somehow yep. innovative. What is innovative about their business model? Yeah, so, so let's, talk about, let's talk about Draper as well, because yeah. um, so Draper Esprit is a European partner of the Draper Venture Network. So Tim Draper's fund, um, he has partnerships all across the world. There are you know, partners in Asia, there are partners in, in other parts, and we are sort of the European part of that group. So therefore we have uh, the ability to, to sort of invest in companies in Europe and then take them to the US to help them sort of raise capital through the, the Draper Fund, obviously, in, in Europe. And so you're sort of, sorry, in the US, and you might be familiar with some of the investments they've made into the likes of Tesla and SpaceX and a range of other things under, under working with uh, Tim Draper and what was filmed with formerly DFJ. So we are part of that network, so Draper connects to, to that global group. Um, some things about how we do things a bit differently. So if anyone's sort of familiar with how venture capital works, typically, um, venture capital funds invest over a set period of time because the fund is a limited period of runs for a limited period of time. Because we are a publicly listed fund, we make investments into companies, and there's no need for us to, to have a limited time to that. We, we're what's called an evergreen fund. So we raise capital on public markets, and so if you buy a share in Draper Esprit PLC, which is the company that we work for, you actually own a stake in all the companies 
that we invest in, don't worry, about 70% of the portfolio. And so you as a public shareholder have a stake in the companies that we've invested in. And what it means for, for the companies we invest in is we can sort of invest and stay invested with you for a very long period of time. There's no limit to how long we need to own that share for. Mm -hmm. And here I see and I understand the link between your previous uh, professional career and what happens now at uh, at uh, Draper Esprit. So really a That's very good fit. Yeah. A very good. So yeah, that that part hasn't changed. We still very much. I I still personally very much believe in the importance of public ownership of of, of equity. Yeah. Um, you know we we make investments into equity. Uh, our investors get a stake of that equity. If you're an entrepreneur who takes capital from venture capital, sorry, from, from Draper Esprit, if you succeed, we as the investors succeed, and then the investors in our public market shares succeed, and that's a great way to distribute the benefits of uh, success across a, a wider degree of society, because unlike a normal venture capital fund, which has sort of limited partners who are very specific groups of organizations, anybody can buy a share in Draper Esprit PLC, and so therefore anyone can benefit from the returns that we make, make investments into the great entrepreneurs that we invest in. So you said that uh, Draper Esprit was listed on in London on the stock uh, yep. London Stock Exchange and also on Euro in Euronext Dublin. So Dublin Stock Exchange is part of the Euronext Group, yep. uh, which also has you know uh, Madrid and Paris and um, and Amsterdam and various others. So uh, Euronext, uh, sorry, Dublin is part of that group of of, of um, markets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, this is really great. Now, uh, what is your role in uh, a Draper Esprit? Yeah. So I'm the marketing director. Um, so much like in the companies that that, that you know, many startups will operate, you need sort of marketing people to make that company sort of was widely known as famous and as sort of you know, drive to be able to drive you know um, sales into your sales pipeline. And it's kind of a similar sort of thing for venture capital. So. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that if we're making investments, everybody's aware of the types of investments we're making and the companies we're working with. So we have to make sure that that part of the business is captured. Um, I also work very closely with um, CMOs from our portfolio companies. So if we take an investment into your company, then um, my, uh, my knowledge and the, the knowledge of my team becomes part of the, I guess, the, the firepower that you have to be able to help drive your business. Uh, and even in the short space of time that I've been with Draper Esprit, just over a month now, I've been able to help some of our uh, portfolio companies with you know, comms issues or with sort of marketing questions. And that's very much part of the service that we offer. And I guess sort of the, the slightly different part being a publicly listed fund. Um, so therefore, I have to be able to work with the public markets and to ensure the public markets understand what we do because a, a, a public listed venture capital fund is quite unusual. Uh, and so obviously you need to be able to tell the market how the publicly listed venture capital fund is different from other potential investments they might make. Okay, uh, tell me about this period. Uh, inevitably we have to speak about it, <laughs> That's it. Yeah. it, it affected uh, everyone in uh, uh, that we know, all the planet actually. Uh, how, was, how is business as usual uh, now in Draper Esprit and how was your, your first day at uh, Draper? <laughs> So, so I, I wrote a blog post about this because it was quite unusual. And it, I've, I've, I've sort of been, you know, I've had a, more than 20 years in my career and, it, and I've had a number of jobs in that time. And it's the first time I've started a job from this seat in my, yeah. in my dining room and working very closely with my team and everything is done via, you know, Zoom or Microsoft Teams. And you sort of, one thing that you notice is your calendar very become, becomes very full of, like, it looks like a very heavily stacked hamburger with half hour meetings sort of sliced in between, maybe it's like a pastrami sandwich of, um, of, of meetings. So that, that part, of, part sort of adds a lot of challenges. It also provides a lot of opportunities. Um, and so you, one of the things you think about is, you know, typically uh, in venture capital, you do a lot of your marketing via events and conferences. Now there are no events and conferences, but what people do have time is they, they have time to do many opportunities and conversations like this. So it gives you a great chance to be able to reach out to people uh, via methods and over distances you normally wouldn't be able to do. Um, you'd be able to talk with people you can't normally find the, the, the time to talk to um, and you can cover topics in a way that is more persistent. So if I go speak at an event and I might be on a panel for half an hour, that unless they record it, that, that conversation is gone. 
But if you're having these conversations, you can capture that information. It becomes part of sort of an online content library that becomes a permanent feature, which I think is really powerful. Um, in terms of how that how COVID has affected um, the wider business for, for, for Draper, Spree and many others, um, it, it, it impacts us in different ways. So I think uh, venture capital, I would say the first couple of weeks into April especially, there's a lot of people were sort of taking a step back and trying to figure out what was going to happen and what investments they could make and whether they could make investments and, and how that sort of thing would work. And the typical side of you know, the two main aspects of venture capital are investing into new companies and then managing your existing portfolio of companies. Um, and in the, the, the new investment side of things, everybody was very much taking a, okay, let's pause, let's see what's happening, let's take investments where they arise and, and make deals where we can, uh, but let's be a little bit cautious about this. And I think that's sort of played out, but I also think that in, excuse me, in, in, in recent weeks, we've seen a lot of deal making happening because people have gone, well, we don't know how long this is going to last for and yeah. business does need to go on and there are companies out there looking to raise funding and we should be making the good deals where we can. And so that's sort of, you know, you started to see a steady progression of new deals coming through. Um, Draper Esprit yesterday were part of an announcement by Aircall, which is a French company. Um, they raised a $65 million round um, and Draper Esprit followed, you know, we were a, a Series B investor and this was a Series C round, so we followed on into Series C and we are very, very proud to be able to do so. So these deals are still happening. Um, so that's sort of the investment side. And I think, I wouldn't say things are back to normal. I would say that things are definitely happening though and we are on a track that is a different kind of normal but still deals happen. On the other side of things is that the, the sort of the other discipline of venture capital, which is managing the existing portfolio that you have. Yeah. Um, and in those sorts of times, look, it's a, it's a very unusual time. Um, there's been a huge drop off in demand for some interest in some types of companies, you know, tourism and leisure and hospitality. And on the other side, there's been a massive increase in demand for different types of enterprise software or SaaS or cloud-based infrastructure. And, you know, Aircall is a, a classic example of that. Um, and I think that, you know, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an investor and as a board member, Draper Street, you know, sort of focuses very, very heavily on having board seats. And you, this is where the, the sort of knowledge and experience of your investors becomes very crucial. Um, because you have to sit down and you have to work with the management team to try and get a new, um, clear idea of what's happening with the business. How does the future look like under these new circumstances? Where are the risks? Where are the opportunities? And that happens in a really rapid period of time. I mean, this isn't, you know, sort of let's plan for the next year ahead over a three-month planning cycle. This is, you have two weeks and you have to start everything all over again and figure out how things are going to look. And if you multiply that across all the portfolio companies you have, you might be sitting on five or ten boards. All of a sudden, these things have to happen in very, you know, very deep level conversations, very serious conversations, um, very, you know, consequential ones, but they happen very quickly. And that, that, that's an interesting challenge. And I know sort of speaking with the investment team at Draper Spree, that's been very much their focus uh, for probably the last couple of months. Uh, so they can get a clear idea of how the future looks. And I think at that point, sort of the experience of your investment team is really important. So I was thinking about this. I mean, I, I've been working around venture capital industry for about 10 years now. Um, obviously, I wasn't working in venture capital during the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, but you know, naturally you would go, well, this crisis has a big economic impact on the world at the moment. The 2008-09 financial crisis seems like a pretty good model to apply of what could happen next. And I was, you know, I was chatting with some of our investment team about this and uh, Stuart Chapman, who's our COO and probably the most experienced investor on our team was like, well, actually, it's, um, it, it's not about 2008 and 2009. This, for, for the tech industry specifically, this looks like a lot like the dot-com crash. You know, in the yeah. dot-com crash of 2001 um, and when it hit Europe, it, everything happened in about two weeks. Everything happened really, really fast. And for the tech industry specifically, the world changed very, very quickly. And as a, an investor in that time, and Stuart was, investment, was an investor back then, so we're talking somebody with 20 years of track record of being a venture capital investor. Um, for, from his perspective, what he's been doing with his portfolios, companies over the last few months is very reminiscent of what was happening back then. You know, you, you take stock very quickly, you assess what's happening, you really get an understanding of 
the base level of what's happening in the wider business and how can we react and change and where the opportunities and so on and so forth. And I think that sort of really drove home to me the, the importance of having a very experienced investment team to understand where the companies, portfolio companies need to go to, to make the best of the next six months and the, the years that come beyond that. Yeah, that's really, that's really great. Tell me about, you told me about the marketing strategy that now you will have to uh, also develop for Trapper in this new ecosystem. But how about uh, some tips for the startups that would like to get in contact with you? Uh, how should they do that? How it's a typically interview with a startup? Okay, Taking so well, the first thing is, please reach out to me, send me an email. Okay. Um, that's just James Clark at Draper's Free, and, 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 uh, and you know, Daniel can share that with you. Um, we tend to look at companies from Series A onwards. Most of our investments are Series B and above. Yeah. Um, we, we sort of, with, with, seri with seed size, with seed stage companies, we don't tend to invest, but obviously, you know, working with partners like Early Bird and Seed Camp and a number of other funds across Europe, if we see an opportunity that's a bit early for us, we'll happily, you know, um, pass that on to one of the one of the, the seed partners we work with because, you know, the right opportunities need to go for the right sort of investors. Um, and, I, and I think sort of very much it's a case of um, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to people like me and saying, look, okay, I'm, I'd like some advice on how to speak to venture capital. I mean, it, it's one of the easiest ways to sort of build a, an investment or a relationship with VC, VCs that leads to investment is not to ask for investment. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, first, the first time you want to be, the, like with, with many things, the first time you meet somebody is not the time you want to be asking for money. <laughs> okay. uh, then generally, the first time you meet with somebody is to sort of start to build that sort of relationship. And, and look, I think that's very true. It's, it's interesting. I used to say this when I was working for the stock exchange. You know, the first time you meet an investor who's on the public market shouldn't be the time you ask for the money. And it's the same thing with venture capital. That, like, you know, very happy to take inbound requests. We have, you know, one of my colleagues, um, Ollie Forsyth, he's our communities manager. He does a great job of, of sort of, I guess, gathering together the various different parts of our community, whether they be, you know, portfolio companies we've already invested in or companies that are too soon for our investment, but we really want to get closer to you and work more, work more closely with you. And so, you know, in, in those sorts of circumstances, look, get engaged with us, you know, um, sign up to the newsletters we do, get, in, get involved with the various different events we run, you know, all sorts of workshops on fundraising and one-to-ones and office hours and all that sort of stuff. Look, by all means, reach out to us and we can make sure that you, you sort of, you're speaking to the right people and getting the right advice so that when the time comes and you do, you know, come into our range of investment, you've got sort of close relationships already, you know, you've had a chance to meet the partners and so by that stage, the, the sort of the, the case for investment becomes, well, let's just make this happen rather than, I'm not sure I know enough about you. Uh, yeah, cool. So if we have this uh, kind of company that you are targeting and uh, if you, you invest, you decide to invest in them, uh, tell me about the other benefits for uh, this uh, company. Uh, you have the financing, well, okay, but so, I've seen on. So, I was looking on your website, and there is a lot, an entire list of benefits for them. What? Uh, yeah, look, I think look, one of the interesting thing, things that's happened in venture capital over the last, well, probably ten years or so, maybe a little bit longer, maybe fifteen. Um, you know, fifteen years ago, venture capital was a bit of a cottage industry. You know, it was lots of small, uh, sort of very focused, very knowledgeable shops of people who went out and invested into companies and lots of money and they, they, they sort of obviously invest a lot of money, but there wasn't that, that the, the amount of venture capital around was substantially smaller than it is today. Now over the last 10 or 15 years, the amount of money that has gone into, from other investors into venture capital has expanded hugely. Um, and what's happened is there are many more venture capital funds than there were, and there is much more money to be invested. And so therefore venture capitalists like Draper, Esprit and others, you have to, um, think about what it is other than just money that you're investing into into a company and we have to sort of think okay well you as an entrepreneur you could take our money or you could take it from one of our competitors or you might take it from a combination of us because that's sort of what you just what you choose to do and so therefore we have to make sure that the offering from us is you know adds more than just the money and, and, I, and I think that we do that so there's a few there's a few key parts of this the first part obviously is 
we sort of talked about the experience of our investors, people like Stu Chapman and, and various others. They come with a lot of experience of just long-term investing into companies over many cycles. And you can't underestimate that kind of value because, you know, if you had an investor sitting on your board who had never seen a down cycle, their, their sort of reaction of what, for, you know, the advice they give you in the current circumstances wouldn't be able to take account for that kind of knowledge. So there's, this experience part is very key. And I can tell you there aren't that many venture capitalists in Europe today who have the length of experience that people like Stuart Chapman has. So then you have other parts of our team. So we have other partners, you know, um, who specialize in different sectors. So uh, we have a guy named Vinoth who focuses on fintech. Uh, we have Nikki McClafferty, McClafferty, she focuses on um, consumer stuff. We have Christoph who sort of does a lot of stuff out of uh, Germany and he sort of focuses on um, things like, um, focuses on things like deep tech. You got Richard Marsh who focuses on enterprise and SaaS. You got Jonathan Sibelia who's this fund of fund specialist. So, we have these different parts of our team who have different areas of specialty. And so our areas of specialty as an investor are FinTech, SaaS and Enterprise, Consumer, Digital Health, and Deep Tech. So those are the sorts of things we're specifically looking for. So that's sort of, you have experience, you have specific category knowledge, and then you have the next part of that, which comes to the bit I was talking about around marketing knowledge. I mean, I have, nearly 20 years of marketing experience, and I have 10 years nearly of working in venture capital. Um, and so my sort of specialist knowledge area of knowledge is marketing for venture capital and how venture capital-backed companies can market as, as solidly as possible. So you get my knowledge and the capability of my team that gets added to your own marketing team. So I'll do things like, I'll work with you as a CEO if you're getting inbound press requests and I'll help you to manage your messaging. Um, if you're sort of looking for people, I can help you source the kind of talent that goes into marketing. By the way, the rest of our investors can help you source, you know, other, other people, whether they be, you know, really high level engineering staff or sales people or the sort of the various other members of your team who are really important for your growth. So you get that part of things. You get our collective knowledge applied to your company. And then the last part, which is where I think that the Draper Esprit difference is, is this aspect of us being a listed fund. So as I said, you know, we want your company to be hugely successful because if your company is hugely successful, hopefully that makes a big difference for your customers. You know, you've done something different that is beneficial for your customers, but also it brings, you know, financial success and um, well, well, sort of well-being for you as your management team, as your sort of, you know, the members of your staff that have shares. So there's a financial payoff to you and your sort of your close, your close teammates. There's a financial payoff to us as your investors, but this really key part, which is that because we have public shareholders, anybody can buy a share in Draper Esprit. Those people also benefit from the success of your company. So if you look at this wider thing of, you know, what benefit am I bringing as an, as, as an entrepreneur to wider society? It's not just when your company goes public that you can start to generate, you know, returns for potential investors. You're actually able to generate returns for all sorts of investors, whether it's moms and dads and retail investors and pension funds and all sorts of, you're generating returns for those people even before you go public. And I think that's a really important thing because it distributes the benefits of the financial side of your innovation to a much wider audience. Yeah, I mean, this is a really successful, uh, you know, uh, matching between uh, public listed, uh, between stock markets and venture capital and uh, I think, uh, yeah, you are really in the right place right now. As I know you. We hope so. We, have, we, we, look, we think it's important to us and we want to work with entrepreneurs who find that sort of thing important to them as well. Because someday, you know, you might be looking at a term sheet and there's us and there's another, there's one of our competitors and hopefully these are the things you make you go, you know what, these are the reasons why I'm going to pick Draper Esprit because they're going to add all these different things just money. Okay, we look for uh, also for uh, on the stock exchange for the Draper Esprit to see exactly how to so also our, become our, some our, of our your is, investors. Is so if you look at Grow for London and GRW on, on Euronext Dublin. Okay, so you are on growth on uh, level. Wonderful. Okay, that's uh, that's really great. Thank you very much, uh, James. We will have the James as mentor on the second of June with the yep. uh, current cohort of the Innovix, with the startups cohort of Innovix. Uh, one last question, James, sure. uh, before finishing. Tell me a nice book 
that you read during this lockdown, something that you would like to <laughs> recommend. It don't have to be on the business side or, uh, you know. No, no, that's fine. I'll really, tell you something funny. So yeah. I read most of my books when I'm, I, I, I leave sort of a, a bit of a distance out of London. Uh, and so I have like a commute of one hour each way. So I tend to read a lot of books when I'm on my way to work. Ah. Now, but the distance it takes me to get from work is my kitchen is through the door over here. So I don't really have very much time to read books anymore. So one of the things I'm missing is is reading books. Now, obviously, there was a bit of a gap between when I finished the London Stock Exchange okay. and I joined Draper Esprit. So I did read some fantasy books then, but it was, I don't know, it was, um, I was reading a series called The Wheel of Time, if anybody's heard of that. And it's 14 books long, and the books just seem to repeat each other endlessly. And it was one of those, I've, I've read a lot of fantasy books in my life, and it was something that I felt like I'd been putting off for a long time. And so I started reading it and I regret having done so. And now I'm four books into it, I regret having started it because I have this mentality that now I have to finish it. And it means I've got 10 more damn books to go and I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy reading them. So I have no book recommendations for you at all. Please don't take my recommendations during lockdown. I hope uh, when we get back to the office, I'll be able to find some interesting books to read again. Okay, the same one hour commuting to the new office? Uh, well, so, sorry, what was that? Uh, it's a bit less, it's a bit less. Yeah. So uh, maybe sort of 45 minutes as opposed to an hour. So a bit less time. Yeah, looking forward to meet you next time in London and also to welcome you here in Bucharest and everything. I can't wait. I, I sort of, this, I have to say, so uh, I travel a lot for sort of work um, or in my previous job at the Stock Exchange, I traveled a lot for work. I had a lot of personal travel last year and I don't know if you ever checked your, your sort of that, that thing that Google Maps sent you of your travel, the amount of travel you've done. I've gone from my busiest ever year of travel in 2019 to virtually no travel this year. I, I managed to get a trip to New York in um, in January and that was a lot of fun, but I don't know when I'm going to be traveling again. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, it was really a, a huge change in uh, all our Very much so. habits. And but I have been enjoying my garden, so that, that's not such a bad thing. Good for you, you have a garden. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. It's like the, there's, a, there's a reason why you move out a long way out of London and a garden is one of those things. If you have also a reliable internet connection, then everything is <laughs> for the next month. That's right. That's right indeed. Okay. Thank you very much, James. That's uh, right, Daniel. It's good. great to speak to you, and I'm looking forward to speaking to everyone next week. Good luck for in the next uh, to Draper Esprit. I really feel that it will be a successful partnership, and uh, looking forward to find out more about uh, about it uh, when you come uh, and you meet our uh, the startups in Innovix. Thank you very much. And as I said, if you're looking to raise capital from seed onwards, ideally from Series A onwards, please send your uh, please send uh, information to Daniel, and he can pass it on to me. And uh, yeah, well, hopefully we can hopefully we can invest in you in the future. This is wonderful.